Hey there guys and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy 13. On the last episode we made it to the Archlight Steep area of Grand Pulse. <clears throat> and also we learned a bit about Seat This Stone missions. Alright, so now's the time where the game opens up and you can explore whatever you want to explore, do whatever you want to do. And there is, a, if you open up the map, you'll see that there's a destination marker to the far northeast. So before going there, I would recommend to do a lot of optional stuff because we're going to need to be a lot stronger. Because the enemies on the other side of the Archlight Steep and the areas beyond the Archlight Steep have really tough enemies to defeat. So we're going to have to do a lot of stuff here before heading on. Now you can simply head on and progress with the story but it's going to be a hard challenge because you're going to be under leveled and yeah it's going to be pretty tough. So what I'm here for is to guide you guys and show you guys the optional areas, the stuff that you can do before moving on and what is recommended to be done before going on. First of all you're going to need a proper setup. <clears throat> so for now. We're going to make our battle team Lightning, Vanille, and Saz. Okay, so now for some paradigms. Let's start off with Commando, Ravenger, Ravenger, and then Ravenger, 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 Commando. Ravenger Synergist and make this your active paradigm decimation this way lightning and Vanille can regularly attack the enemy while Saz cast the haste buff at the start of battle Once haste is on all your enemies. You can switch over to relentless assault Next up we're gonna go ahead and do commando Sabotar Ravenger Next, we're going to do Commando, Medic, Commando, and finally, we're going to do Medic, Medic, Commando. Alright, once your paradigms are set up, now let's talk about the accessories. Alright, so the enemies are a lot tougher. And we're going to have to get some proper accessories. So for now, I would highly suggest to buy at least at least one mythical bangle. It costs $15,000, but it gives one character 300 HP. Or actually, no, 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 no. Cancel that. We're not going to buy the mythical bangle. Instead... Let's see. Let's go ahead and roll with what we have for now. Because we're going to need all the money that we can get. So let's talk about equipment. For lightning, we have the gladius, the shaman's mark, and the gold bangle. But you can change that shaman's mark. Let's go ahead and remove the accessories off of Fang. Now let's talk about equipment for lightning. You're going to want to put the Brawler's Wristband and Gold Bangle since we're going to be using her as our primary commando. Vanille can get the Healer Staff, Shaman's Mark, and Titanium Bangle. And Saz. Can get the Shaman's Mark. And Titanium Bangle. Now... Now is the time where you guys can start upgrading your weapons and accessories. So if you want, you can go ahead and do that now. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and clear out a couple of Cethus Stone missions. So if you want, you can start upgrading your weapons and stuff. And very shortly, I'll, all of our accessories and weapons are going to change. But for now, I'm just going to roll with the standard setup until we get a couple of Cethus Stone missions done. Alright, so 
you can do this in one of a couple different ways. I'm going to tell you guys the best way in order to advance so that you can get everything done before proceeding to the destination marker on the other side of the arch light steep. So the first thing that we're going to tackle is Cetus Stone missions. Now you're going to have to advance to about mission 14. So I think there's a total of like 60 something missions. But for now, we're only going to get to mission 14. And some of the missions are very strong and very tough. So I suggest to uh, advise with caution or proceed with caution. So directly in front of the save point, you'll get your first Cetus mi mission. Now when examining these Cetus stones, the mission screen will pop up. At the top left corner, you'll see what number the mission is. So this one is 01. The name is Pond Scum. Below the title, you'll get the mark, which is the enemy you have to kill. The location, which is in the Art Light, Arch Light Steep Central Expanse, which isn't too far away. And the class, which is D. So now when looking at the class, that'll tell you guys how hard the monsters are. So you got class D, then class C, class B, and finally class A. Class A being the hardest mi mission or monster to kill. Finally, beneath the class, you'll get a description on the Cetus Stone and what enemy you have to kill. So if you press A or X, you can choose to take on the mission and the mission will be commenced. Now note that you can only take on one mission at a time and some of the Cetus Stones are sleeping, meaning that you cannot activate them until you complete other Cetus Stones beforehand. So with that being said, it's best to tackle Cetus Stones in the correct order. Start from one, then two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. Don't skip ahead, or you could find yourself fighting a really tough monster that you're no match for. So the objectives before we head to the destination marker, if you're wondering what we're going to be doing over the next couple episodes, is we're going to be tackling Cetus Stones first. Once we get to about mission 14, we're going to start working on getting CP gathered and developing our Crystarium and maxing out our Crystarium for the character's primary roles. Once we have our characters maxed out, we're going to work on upgrading our weapons and accessories. Once we have our weapons, accessories, and our characters maxed out, then we're going to proceed to the destination point. And along the way, we're going to be picking up loads of treasure balls that can be found on the Arch Light Steep. And also, we're going to be unlocking the use of chocobos so that we can get through this area and navigate through the Arch Light Steep a lot more effectively and quickly. So in order to unlock chocobos, you're going to have to make it to seat this stone mission 13 or 14. Once you complete that mission, you'll be able to ride chocobos. So that's why it's very important to go ahead and do the Cetus Stone missions first. And also take note that some areas of the Archlight Steep, which is the area we're in, can only be accessed by chocobos. And some treasure balls can only be accessed by chocobos. So that's why we're going to go ahead and do that. Don't spend any money right now because we're going to need all the money we can get. So don't spend any money. Finally, if you pull up the map and you look around, you'll see a pink star. And you might be wondering what this pink star is. Well, it's the mission mark. This is the monster that you have to kill. So after you take on a new mission, open up the map and try to find that star and then head in that direction. So we're going to head directly north of the Cetus Stone. And ahead you'll see a treasure ball. So this is the first treasure ball we're going to collect. We gotta take care of the enemies that guard it. Now the enemies found in this area are very hard. Even the weakest enemies are gonna be a challenge at first. So what we're gonna have to do Thanks. is we're gonna have to proceed very cautiously and only fight the enemies that you know you can defeat.
so after clearing out those enemies, go ahead and open up the first treasure ball that you find. For a Rod of Thorns, which is a new weapon for Vanille. And some argue it's her best weapon to upgrade. But for now, let's stick with the healer staff. Note that I will tell you guys when we're going to start upgrading weapons and which weapons are the best to upgrade. So after you open up the first treasure ball, go ahead and continue. Go ahead and continue towards the mark. And make sure that you avoid the large dinosaur adamantos stomping around the area. They will quickly wipe you out. Once you get to the first mark, go ahead and take it out. It's a flan enemy called the Ecto Pudding. After everyone's New buffed strategy. up, switch to Relentless Assault and attempt to stagger the ball. If your HP drops low, switch to Tireless Charge. Here we go. Thanks. Once everyone's healed, switch to Try Disaster and raise the Stagger Beacon. Alright, so after beating the first mission, you'll get 980 Christian points. By the way, do not worry about 5-starring the missions because we are going to redo all missions once we get this thing called the Golden Watch. What the Golden Watch does is it's a key item and it extends the battle time that you have in order to get a 5-star rating. So if it takes 5 minutes to get a 5 star rating for one battle, getting the gold watch will allow you to take 10 minutes to get the 5 star rating, which makes it a whole lot easier. So don't worry about going for the 5 stars at this time. And after you defeat the Ecto Pudding, the mission will be complete and you will get the reward screen. Here you'll see the mission name and number the enemy you defeated and your rating that you got in stars on the upper right also you'll get your completion bonus which you'll get rewarded with for defeating defeating every new mark so our completion bonus is the energy sash and your party has earned the rank of good samaritan so while slaying different marks you'll get a mission rank and as you complete more missions your rank will increase giving you a new title so right now we're at the Good Samaritan rank. Alright, so after you defeat the first mark, a new Cetus Stone will rise up directly in front of you. So let's go ahead and examine it. And here you'll get the second mission, which is Goodwill Hunting. Your mark is Uridimu, and the location is Archlight Steep, the central expanse. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and take on the mission. And then open up your map, and you'll see that the mission is just slightly to the west of your position. So let's go ahead and head in that direction now. While heading there, if you head directly left from the Sita Stone and hug the wall, you'll run into a treasure ball so we're gonna make our way over to that right now <laughs> let's take out a couple enemies along the way Thank you. 
Alright, after clearing them out, continue moving towards the wall. And up ahead, you will see a treasure ball guarded by a couple of little birdies. Go ahead and take out the Raganda. Thanks. It's done. Alright, so you may notice that after defeating most enemies in this area, you'll get a lot more CP. We just got 3,000. This will allow you to quickly fill up the Crystarium grid as soon as possible. So save up all your CP, and once you've got enough, go ahead and uh, expand your Crystarium and develop your characters in their primary roles first. After you clear out the enemies, go ahead and open up the nearby treasure ball for a Zephyr ring. And then make your way towards the mission mark by hugging the left hand side wall. Thank you. Wisdom does come with age. Alright, so after clearing out them enemies, you'll s shortly pass a dormant Cetus stone. And ahead will be the mark that you're looking for. Alright, so for now, we're going to switch our battle team. We're going to take Saz out and bring Fang in because of her sentinel role. So for now, let's switch the paradigms to Relentless Assault.
All right, so once you have your Paradigm set up, now let's work on our accessories. So go ahead and remove the Brawler's wristband. And you can remove Saz's accessories. And equip Fang. With the Brawler's wristband. And a titanium bangle. And then give Lightning the Shaman's Mark. Alright, so once you're ready and you're prepared, go ahead and face the mark. Now this mark's going to be pretty tough because the mark is backed up by four Gorgon Seppets. So go ahead and take out the Gorgon Seppets first. New strategy! looking at me oh we got great no okay yeah so you might experience a couple different game overs but don't worry you're more than strong enough to take these guys out you just need a little bit of practice so let's try this again Okay, so we're gonna have to try one more time. But he's nothing whenever you fight him by yourself. And once you stagger him, you can uh, press the right bumper or R1 to look at his health. He has 45,900 health, which is nothing.
All right, so after clearing them out, you'll get 2,950 CP after the battle. And the second mission will be complete. And your rewards for completing it will be a Kabbalite. And that takes care of mission two. All right, so after defeating mission two, if you turn around, the third Sethi Stone will awaken directly behind you and this will be mission three now the mark is Algalu and the location is the Yashis Massive which is a separate area from the Archlight Steep so we're gonna say bye to the Archlight Steep for now go ahead and accept the mission And there's lots of treasure to be found around here, but before we go treasure hunting, we're going to take care of a couple more missions so we can get this stuff rolling. Also, we can start upgrading our equipment. worth the effort. Alright, so now let's make our way back to the beginning of the steep where the save point is. And as you can see, we have to leave this area. So let's go ahead and head back to the beginning area. Continue back towards the save point. Now, once you get to the save point, there is an excellent spot to get CP. <clears throat> if you look directly past in front of the save point, you'll see over here is a behemoth. Now, in order to kill this guy, you're going to have to be strong enough to kill him in one stagger, and we're nowhere near strong enough yet. So the ways to get stronger are to complete Cethus missions and farm a little bit of CP from the weaker enemies and then upgrade your weapons. By the time you've upgraded your weapons and got to about Cethus Stone mission 8 or 9 and gathered at least 40 or 50,000 CP, you should be able to kill this guy in one stagger. So I'm just going to note that this is the guy you're going to use to CP farm later and I'll show you guys in a nut in a, a couple more episodes. But for now just mark where he is so that you can remember and I'll remind you guys when the time is right. And make sure you save your game and that's going to conclude this episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 13.
I'll see you guys next time where we continue on the Seath Stone missions in order to get stronger and enter a new area of Grand Pulse.